name is Matthew Terrell, and I'm an artist and writer based out of Atlanta, Georgia. I won the 2020 to 2021 uh, season of Apex Arts Open Call uh, for curators, and the title of my exhibition was Nancy Pelosi's Living Room, San Francisco, 1986. Amazing, and congratulations, Matthew. Um, to start, would you mind giving us an overview of the themes and ideas uh, that your exhibition will explore? The concept for Nancy Pelosi's Living Room is that it will be an immersive, interactive exhibition experience that shows the beginnings of the AIDS Memorial Quilt in San Francisco in the 1980s. Uh, we will be in a Victorian living room, uh, making it look like the living room of Nancy Pelosi in 1986. Activists like Cleve Jones, who started the AIDS Memorial Quilt, actually met in Nancy Pelosi's living room when she was a local politician in San Francisco at that time. And so what we want to do is use archive ephemera from the AIDS Quilt, uh, which just recently moved permanently to a museum space in San Francisco. Uh, along with early pieces of the quilt and some works by contemporary artists addressing HIV and AIDS in this exhibition. And I do want period furniture as well. And perhaps one of the biggest lifts that we've got for this exhibition is I want to have a floor standing television playing on loop video artwork as well. Uh, so that's the concept of my exhibition and I really look forward to putting this on and hopefully all of these parts can come together uh, easily in the next year. And I wanted to ask also, um, why is now a good time to revisit the history of the AIDS movement, including the AIDS quilt? The number one reason that I pitched this project right now is because uh, as of January of 2020, this year, the AIDS quilt has moved permanently to San Francisco and they're building a museum to it in Golden Gate Park. Previously, the quilt had lived in Atlanta, where I currently live, um, and that's how I became acquainted with the quilt. A little bit of the backstory is that uh, many years ago, uh, the quilt was having some financial issues and staying in San Francisco was just not uh, financially feasible for the organization. So they moved operations to Atlanta, where it was just much more affordable to store this 54-ton piece of artwork. Uh, but Nancy Pelosi, along with uh, my local congressman, John Lewis, uh, this past year helped to move it permanently to San Francisco. Also, the Library of Congress this year uh, has taken on um, housing and taking care of a lot of the ephemera uh, and the early um, notes and photos of the quilt. Um, so it's really a, a being recognized this year as a piece of our national heritage. Uh, and also, I, I think that it's really important for us to continue talking about the legacy of HIV and AIDS in our community. It does remain an epidemic in our nation, particularly uh, where I live in the South and in Atlanta. Uh, the face of HIV has changed over the year, uh, over the years. Um, but I think it's something that we still need to talk about. Uh, and finally, uh, you know, I talk with a lot of like younger queer people and a lot of them don't even realize what the AIDS quilt is. Uh, and for something that's such a unique piece of our cultural heritage, I think that this is really a great way to bring it to life for all sorts of audiences. Absolutely, and so well put. Um, does this exhibition mark the beginning of your um, work around this issue or these topics? Or does it represent more of um, like a uh, trajectory of ongoing interest for you? Uh, this work definitely represents uh, an ongoing part of my practice as an artist. Uh, for the past few years, I've been doing a lot of artwork related to bringing awareness to HIV and AIDS. Mm -hmm. uh, in Atlanta, about three years ago, I did a big public sculpture at the National Center for Civil and Human Rights called Atlanta's HIV Positive Population Now. And we use CDC data to chart HIV growth in Atlanta. And we had this big public number uh, that mm -hmm. I would go out and change every single week. Uh, to bring attention to the fact that um, there are over, I, I believe, 27,000 people in metropolitan Atlanta living with HIV and AIDS, or HIV uh, diagnosis. Um, and, and I've done a lot of other uh, work related to HIV, and I've done a lot of writing for Vice and Slate and Huffington Post related to this issue. So it's definitely something that's close to uh, my heart as an artist. And the AIDS quilt in particular, uh, funny enough, uh, back in grad school uh, where I went, uh, Savannah College of Art and Design, I took a class called Writing for New Media, and we did a project with the AIDS quilt where we did podcasts about specific panels of the quilt. So that's how I really first became acquainted with it. Uh, and then, of course, living here in Atlanta, I've had the chance to meet a lot of the leadership from the quilt. Uh, and follow their work. So this is really definitely uh, a culmination of a lot of interests of mine into one big project. How did you first hear about Apex Art in our open call? And have you submitted before this time or is this your first time submitting? 
I have submitted to Apex Art probably about four or five times over the years. I want to say that I first found out about it through probably Eflux, um, that newsletter, uh, many, many years ago. Uh, and I, I pitched several different uh, concepts over the years, and I kept on scoring like between number 10 and number 20. I was like, oh, I'm so close year after year. Um, my most recent one that I pitched, I think, scored number 10. It was called Transcontinental, uh, and it was uh, a photography or concept of a photography show looking at uh, the trans experience and picturing trans identity through different countries and cultures uh, around the world. Um, I've pitched uh, show, <laughs> the first one that I pitched, I think it got 12 or 15 rank, uh, and this is really what kind of got me hooked. Um, uh, it was a drag house concept. Uh, but there is this idea of like houses of drag queens who lead their families and they support each other. Uh, and so what I wanted to do with that pitch was to um, rent an actual house and just have like drag queens living there and making their artwork, making wigs and making costumes and teaching people um, the art of drag. Um, but having scored, you know, like 10 to 20 so many different times, was like I, I knew I could crack it um, with like the right show at the right time. Uh, and also uh, advice to anybody who's applying out there. Um, do a second and a third and a fourth check over it, you know, make sure that every single word is perfect in there. You know, there's a lot of like that's and witches and uh, all sorts of other words that you can eliminate and it just makes your writing that much stronger. Um, with this one, Nancy Pelosi's Living Room, I went over it so many times and definitely economized a lot uh, with my writing, which I think helped. Thank you so much. I look forward to putting this show on, and I am so thankful that I have a great organization who can help me bring it to life. Thanks so much, Matthew. All right. You have a good day. All right.